Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and today I was going to be talking about this Hatfield shotgun. I'm not actually going to be doing a review of the gun today, um, but I was going to go over some stuff that I think is kind of important to fix on it when you get one new out of the box. Uh, the deal with these shotguns is, I saw this at Walmart, uh, they're 99 bucks, new in the box. Uh, they're made by a company in Turkey called Khan, supposedly, and imported by an Illinois company. Uh, for sale through Walmart. Now, for $99 shotgun, it's kind of neat. It's got this hinge feature, so you can uh, close it. And if you go online uh, on YouTube here and a couple other places, you'll see videos or tutorials. People have cut these down and turned them into like little backpacking shotguns and messed with inletting the wood and cutting down the trigger guard to make them fold up. Now, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm interested in doing. And uh, for something like that, you know, you could just get a Mossberg Cruiser or a pistol grip pump action and have a lot more firepower in about the same form factor. But anyways, what I was going to go over today is uh, what I think you want to do on a new gun, both to address the issues with the trigger that I hear a lot of complaints about, and if you have some problems. So, for example, mine, when I opened the box, uh, the stock was was loose and rattling on the action uh, so that's not very good and the trigger is one of the big complaints about these guns the trigger is very very stiff so when I was in there addressing the stock issue uh, I looked at the trigger mechanism and there's a pretty easy way to drop that trigger pull weight um, you will have to play with it it's not super straightforward uh, and may require some tweaking on your part but uh, I'll show you how to go in and do that, and like I said, essentially for free. And then uh, some stuff, some other stuff you might want to do while you're in there. Before we start, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need some thread locker. This is blue. This is red. Blue is the one that is removable or semi-permanent. Um, red is stronger. I would recommend going with blue uh, for this job. You are going to need a half-inch uh, socket, a long tube and an extension are probably going to be required. If you have a longer extension, you may be able to get by with just a regular socket. Uh, it doesn't really matter how long the socket is, it's just actually the length. So the short one will work, but you may need, or even two extensions would work. Uh, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, and you're going to need some gun grease. I like to use, uh, I think I've talked about it a bunch of times now, just the cheap uh, Molly Lube grease from Walmart in the auto section. Uh, that stuff I find, it's Molly Lithium Grease, it works really well. Uh, and that's pretty much all you're going to need to go through and address the issues I talked about on this. So I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing while I do it. And uh, I'll show you how to take it apart and what you need to address. So we've got our shotgun. The first thing you're going to want to address is open the action. And be careful because one thing I don't like about the shotgun is to open the action, it's the same motion as pulling the trigger, but you're pulling the trigger guard. So, make sure that the gun is unloaded. In this case, it's brake action, so it's really easy to see that. But I want to stress that because sometimes I don't specifically go through that stuff online in the interest of saving time, uh, but it is important to always make sure your guns are unloaded before you work on them. Um, so, the first problem I had with mine was the buttstock was, was loose. Now, there's a couple solutions. Uh, in my case, it was just that it was loose. To get in there and see what's going on, you're going to need to take out the screws that hold the butt plate onto the stock. Uh, on my gun, they're just two Phillips screws, and you should just be able to use a number two Phillips screwdriver and get them to come off. I'm going to try and do this so you can see better. One screw. And if you're smart, you leave the top screw in just a little bit to keep the butt plate from rotating so you don't have to hold it. And you do want to be careful, once the screws are all the way out, the butt plate could fall down. Work on a table or somewhere so it doesn't fall on the ground and crack. It is plastic. Uh, I'd hate to see you break your butt plate on a new gun. So once you get the butt plate off, you can see in there, there is a standard uh, bolt in there. It's a half inch bolt. You need a half inch socket to get it off. And it's regular thread, so you're going to go um, left uh, counterclockwise to get it off. Um, 
In my case, it was loose. Let me show you what it, what it kind of looked like. Uh, and once you get it a little bit loose, it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be that hard to turn it by hand. But in my case, when I got the gun out of the box, the, the stock was just kind of loose on the action like that. So that's something you definitely want to address. But anyways, you're just going to get that bolt loosened up and uh, it's going to let your stock fall off here. The bolt inside is literally just a long bolt with some washers to make up the difference in space. So pretty, pretty simple. Now we're inside. In my case, I was able to fix the, the loose stock problem by just tightening it up a little bit. In some cases, if it's really loose, you may need to add or remove washers to that bolt. But as long as we're this far into the gun, let's look at that trigger issue before we put the stock back on. So the trigger uh, is pretty stiff. And uh, some people were saying it was like 12 pounds. I don't actually have a trigger scale. I need to order one, but I'm lazy. Um, but how the trigger works, it's this leaf spring right here is... Uh, what uh, powers the hammer. So when the trigger is holding the hammer back, there's tension on this spring. Now, to install the spring and set tension on it, there is this screw right here. Now, because of this design, adjusting the screw will adjust the amount of spring tension on the hammer. Um, and as you can see, there's, there's a little hole on the bottom here. I'll bring it in a little closer. So as you can see, there's a, a hole, a threaded hole, where the screw goes into, and there's essentially just this little flat blade screw that goes into the spring here. Now, you can set the tension on that by simply backing this screw out. And what that's going to do is it's going to lower the amount of tension on the hammer. Now, the problem with that is you got two issues. A, you now have reduced the amount of tension the spring is exerting on this screw. So during firing, uh, during recoil, the screw could back out. So that's where your Loctite comes in. You're going to use a couple dabs of Loctite on the screw once you know where you want to put it. The other issue you're going to run into is you don't know where to put this screw. Uh, if you back it out too far, A, it's going to be prone to strip the threads um, from the spring tension. So it's got to be in at least a little bit, and it also has to be in far enough so that the hammer still has enough force to hit the shell. So how these hammers work is it's, it's a rebounding hammer. And let me see if I can show you what that looks like. So when I pull the trigger and let go of it, the hammer stops here, and it's got a, a safety in there um, that is clicked on. But if you take the safety off and you, and you push the hammer, it, it will not go further. You actually have to have the trigger pulled, and the hammer over travels and hits that firing pin and pushes it out. And that's all inertia driven. So if the spring is too weak, the hammer is going to go so far forward, and it's not going to hit that pin hard enough, and it's not going to do what you need to do. So the way to, the way to do this is you're going to have to play with it. You're going to have to take the gun, Try your favorite brand of 12-gauge ammo. Try multiple brands, whatever you want to do. Uh, in my case, I tried a couple, and everything seemed to work fine with the settings. The trigger's nice and light. Once you, know, once you trial and error, take the stock off, adjust it, try shooting, once you're getting reliable ignition and the trigger feels light enough that you're comfortable with it, I would just stop there, and uh, I would put some Loctite in this screw um, and set it where, where, you know, where you had it, and you should be good to go. Now the advantage of using removable Loctite is you can always adjust it later. There's also the possibility that this spring will lose some tension and uh, you may need to tighten it a little bit in the future. But the Loctite will keep that from backing out and will keep it adjusted where it is even though you don't have the screw bottomed out in the threaded hole in the frame. So um, now you've addressed your heavy trigger pull issue. The other issue I heard a lot of people complaining about was the fact that the um, that it recoils a lot. Now it is a lighter gun uh, and it will recoil a bit. If you want to worry about that, 
get a trap vest or get a limb saver, you know, a butt pad of some sort. That should mitigate that. While you have the gun apart, I would also, to, to keep the action working well, go through and put some Maui grease in all the wear surfaces, the, the lock up, everything in here. I kind of went through and greased it liberally. Um, the only thing you really don't want to grease is down the barrel. Uh, you just want to use gun oil or something in there. It's your standard cleaning and then wipe it out. But all this area you can grease. Now if you're going to use this a lot out in the field, maybe try and wipe some of the excess off so it doesn't collect dirt and dust. But you know, I don't really shoot my guns all that much and dusty or really nasty conditions, so it's not a huge deal for me. But you know, if you're a desert shooter or something like that, try and keep your, your grease down to a minimum. But the advantage of greasing it uh, when it's new is it's very tight when it's new and some of that's going to wear in but if possible if you grease it it's it's going to allow the wear to be minimized because what happens is when these guns are new they're super tight but most break actions after a little bit of shooting and wear they get super loose if you can grease it and you can get it moving freely because you greased it not because it actually broke in and wore in it's going to stay tighter for much longer and be a much better gun it's also held together with a screw here so you may in the future be able to tighten that more i'm not i didn't take it out and see exactly how it's set up in there but you may have a little bit of give there or be able to put some spacers in if it gets super loose but uh, it's actually a pretty solid gun for 99 bucks i'm going to take it back a little bit and we'll put it back together and uh you should be all set. So here we have our, our greased up gun with our adjusted um, hammer spring here. And like I said, it's loctited in place. You also have, you know, you can grease the, the release mechanism. I did when I had it apart. That's a good idea too. But now you should be all set. Now, since I've already adjusted this, I was happy with the trigger pull. Everything is working okay for me. There is one last step. I'm going to put some blue Loctite onto the end of this stock bolt that holds it on just to keep that from coming loose again. I think that's probably what happened during shipping uh, or it just wasn't quite snugged up. So, and to use a Loctite, you just want to use a tiny little drop and you kind of want to just spread it around. I'm not actually currently dispensing product. I'm just moving what I put on uh, around a little bit, maybe a little bit more like that. And, and that's it. Now the Loctite's in the threads when I bolt the stock back on it should uh, set up nice and it should I shouldn't have to worry about it backing out in the future but I did use blue uh, which should be able to be removed if I need to one problem when you use something like red is a lot of times the red or there's even I think one even higher than that maybe purple or something but the really hard ones you have to heat with a torch to get loose now I don't know about you but I don't know a good way to heat uh, a bolt with a torch while it's inside a wooden stock. So do use a removable Loctite. Uh, it's one of those times it's gonna help. So I'm just gonna put my stock back in place and it's gonna be a little bit tricky to do while keeping it on camera. But you're just gonna put your nut back in place. And I would do finger tight and then use your ratchet to snug it up a little bit. You just need to make sure that it's not wobbling around. Um, and you don't need to go crazy tight on it. Um, you know, the other option too is this may have been tight when it left the factory, but the wood compressed in shipping. So, you know, maybe they're all just a little bit wobbly and just need that little bit more of, of snugging. But you don't want to overdo it because if you get it too tight, uh, it's going to crack because uh, it's going to put some extra stress on the wood. So just go enough that uh, it feels solid, it's not wobbling, and uh, that Loctite should keep it in place for you. So our last step is we need to put our butt plate back on, and that's the same two screws we took off. Uh, I don't think you can need to Loctite these, they're wood screws going into wood. Um, probably don't want to over tighten those too much because you could split the stock um, you just need to snug them they shouldn't come out so there you have it for uh, the cost of some Loctite and a few tools that you probably already have around the house um, you now have 
the same $99 shotgun, but which, with a much lighter trigger uh, and hopefully a tighter stock and uh, an action that's much easier to open and close. So for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other questions or uh, you want any other information about the Hatfield shotgun, I'm going to have a review of the gun itself, shooting it and everything coming up. But uh, we'll get to that when I get a chance. I have a whole bunch of stuff on the plate right now, so it's been kind of crazy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.